G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, Seven, oh, 17 to 22, and 15 to 22 tonight they reckon, so um, it's going to be a nice clear morning, but it's actually a bit cloudy, it's supposed to be clear this morning with um, a high chance of showers this afternoon, so there won't be any painting or anything going on. I've, I've stirred up all the yellow paint for the Massey Ferguson 20 to paint a few little bits and pieces like the headlight cows and bits and pieces but if there's moisture around like there is I'll, I'll probably give that a miss for a little while. A um, few days, no hurry for that tractor, it's okay. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, yeah but in the, <laughs> it's been end of financial year so the end of financial year or the financial year in Australia goes from the 1st of July to the 30th of June and um, so this week we've been doing end of financial year stuff um, yesterday Sunday we we're in the shop um, running figures and um, yeah we had to you, you have to sort of have a stock take and then um, you have to report to the government your stock valuation and we normally hold around 150,000 worth of parts in stock at any one time and you still never got the right parts <laughs> but um, what the government does though um, the reason they want you to report your stock holding and you may notice end of financial year sales everywhere and everyone's offering 20% off 10% off whatever um, end of financial year sales so what happens is um, say the, the company tax in Australia is 25% so if you make a hundred thousand dollars profit in your business that's after all expenses and that and there's a hundred thousand dollars clear the government says I need 25,000 of that so you've got to write them a check of 25,000 bucks and not only do they do that but they say well you'll probably make the same next year so they cut your um, your $25,000 tax bill now, they cut it into four equal components and every quarter you've got to pay $8,250 um, to them in advance because you might make it. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> I mean, last year, uh, you, you, can, you can keep your tax a bit behind if you can, um, helps cash flow and that, but yeah, last year, um, yeah, we had to pay. <laughs> we paid an awful lot of tax. Um, um, I think we worked out 190,800 tax just from our business. And 190,000 and 190,000 and eight dollars. Yeah, I think it was. Um, that's with our little business, just giving that to the government. So, anyway, if you're on welfare or that, <laughs> hope you hope you enjoyed it. Um, so what they do with the stock though is say I've got $150,000 worth of stock this time and we've decided to take on something else or build the business over time and, and the next 12 months we have $250,000 worth of stock. So that extra $100,000 of stock, well the government considers that as profit and it's completely the opposite because you've bought that $100,000 worth of parts and brought it into your business so you're $100,000 out. But the government says if you could afford to do that, you should have been paying tax on that. So if you pick your stock holding up $100,000, well, they will give you another $25,000 tax bill for that. So, so that's why in Australia, um, around this time of year, you see all these end of financial year sales. So what happens is um, if the business needs $200,000 worth of stock to run efficiently, um, for tax time they'll try and drop that down, sell everything out and drop it to say 150000 and then 1st of July they'll, fuck it, they'll reorder it all back in and get their level up to where it is. Um, in the tractor parts game we can't do that so much, it just doesn't sort of lend itself to that. Um, but in saying that, um, we have a big oil order going in today, we have Bearco orders, Sparex orders, um, we've held orders over um, so they didn't get on the books. So. Um, you hold the orders over where if you pull those orders back into this financial year just gone you'd actually lower your profit so you'd pay less tax but um, but then it comes into your business and if it hits your bottom line as stock well you've got to pay tax anyway so uh, there's no free rides so um, so we've been doing that and um, 
1st of July today, so it's a, it's a fresh start for the financial year. Um, Australia's in a, they're not calling it a recession, but it is. Um, and our figures have been down, look, I just did a run and we're down around $10,000 per month in sales as an average over the year. And it's just because electricity's got dearer, um, everything has gone up. You know, the, the, um, the young families or, or families that are paying off their homes, the interest rates have gone up. And um, yeah, everyone's just feeling the pinch. It's, it's just tight, the power, bloody rates, um, insurances, things like that. Everything has just gone up to buggery. Um, the wages haven't kept up with it. Um, we've given our staff a pay rise a few months back now. And um, yeah, the government's sort of saying they, you know, the wages have to go up. And as of 1st of July, the basic wage in Australia has gone to $25, $26 an hour, something like that, I think it is. And I know in, in USA that would sound like a lot of money, but it, you can't live on that here. Um, yeah, you, you need like 30 bucks an hour or better just to get by, probably. Yeah, so um, anyway, that's how it is. New financial year, so I've been concentrating on that this last week and um, yeah, getting all the ducks in a row and tidying up loose ends and things like that. So shed work has been, look, damn near zero. <laughs> um, even after work, you know, I come up to work and I was going to chop the boards up for the carry-all and do all this other stuff and just nothing, you know. Um, by the time I got back late from work and things like that, it was just nothing happened. So I haven't been in the little machine shop machine and stuff or anything like that. So um, I got a bit of bonnet sanding done on the Massey Ferguson 20. I, I got that a bit more of that done. Um, but yeah, there was, <laughs> there wasn't a lot, there just wasn't time. Um, I went out the back and I found an, an alloy um, uh, on a on a Massey 20 and look this is off an old bonnet and I'm pretty sure the old bonnet would have originally been off my Massey Ferguson 135 and look the grill was wrecked the bonnet was wrecked the whole thing but I'd spotted that out there and it didn't it didn't look shiny like this then but um I've polished it up a little bit it's still all dirty like it still needs a big bath it's a bit dirty in the back there but um I've tidied that up and it does need a better polish yet. Um, where I got some of the oxidisation off, you can see a couple of sand marks there still. But look at the whole tractor isn't going to be isn't going to be all sparkling. It's going to be like an as is as you know in its working clothes type thing. So um, um, there's something um, I've got something coming for that. So um, I thought I'd use that on the tractor, even though. Like the, the Massey Ferguson 20, it's a later tractor and, um, you know, with a power steer and solid axle, um, straight axle, things like that. But it would have probably had the plastic, um, it would have had the plastic Massey Ferguson um, top bar and it would have had holes drilled in that and the, um, the industrial bucket badge in there, you know, the upturned um, loader bucket in there. So... Um, but anyway, look, I thought I'd, um, I'd like the Massey Ferguson 135, that's done. I don't need to revisit that for anything I'm aware of. Um, and I had this out there and I thought, well, I've, I'm, I'll probably put that on. It had no badge, on, no bar on it at all. So um, rather than put a plastic one, I'll put that on, use it and um, tidy it up a bit more yet. There's a few little dings and that in it, but like I say, I am going to leave it like that. Um, yeah, it'll match the whole tractor, it'll have that look, and if I ever, and, and you know, I probably will at one stage paint it right up, but not for the moment, I just don't need the extra work. Um, my mate Jeff, um, Jeff contacted me yesterday about, um, these are the little Bearco fuel taps, and um, they're, the, they're the standard T20 fuel tap. We would sell a ton of these. And yeah, you open them two turns. And yeah, if you open them two turns, you suck fuel out of the top pipe there. And then if you open it right up to reserve, well, you suck the last inch out of your tank. So, and there's a gauze there. And um, 
Anyway, he got onto me last yesterday evening about um, he had a couple of these taps and he couldn't identify the thread. And I was thought, and I, I reckon I bought some nuts, but I was saying Jeff this morning, I, I got to, I got to have a look. I don't know where I'll put them. I'll, they'll be in a plastic pot marked somewhere, but I've. I just can't remember what I've done with the bloody things. And um, when I find them, they'll go in with the fuel things. But I bought some... Well, I thought it was a car there, but no. I bought some brake pipe fittings one time, and I'm bloody sure they fitted, but now I can't find them. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm going to have time today to look. <laughs> I mean, we've got the kids today, so... I'm um, at school holidays, so we've got the grandkids, so... Adele's coming to help with them, and um, so I'll probably have a few interruptions today, but... Um, I ran to the shop this morning to grab a tap to do a test thread on this fitting here because um, Jeff was having trouble identifying it and I always thought it was 38 UNF, 3824. Um, but it turns out it's probably 71624. So um, actually I should actually find a UNF bolt and try and screw in it and just see. I don't know. But um, yeah, I went and got it and I got a little pipe here and I've measured it up and it's it's Look, the taper, it's a tape, slightly tapered thread and you use a double flare and it's um, around 425 thou OD, um, 24 threads per inch. So um, I went up to the front of my little machine shop and over a little wall chart and it looks like it's a UNS thread. So anyway, I'm yet to, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to fiddle with this more yet. And um, so, uh, yeah, Jeff was saying, oh, this too might be late now. And it is and it's all all his fault, everything. So, <laughs> I told him I'd go and blame him. Um, so that's an easy fix. Um, the other thing that happened, and you can probably see by the, um, by the um, thumbnail, or the, the title of the video, is I bought another tractor. <laughs> um, now, <coughs> pardon me. This tractor is not new to the viewers. They'll know it's been sitting out the front there for ages and ages and ages. And um, my mate Biddy owned it and he brought it here a couple of years ago to get it running for him. But once we got into it, the inlet manifold was absolutely rooted. And it's a Ford 2000 petrol. And I'm actually having trouble dating it. Um, if you look in the American, well, it's got a petrol engine, which is odd for Australia to start with. And I've only ever seen this one. There's one down at the Ford Museum in Naya. And um, Desi Wick's up in Toowoomba. He tells me he's got one in his collection. So there's three I know of in Australia. Um, and any, anyway, it's been sitting out the front and I got the... Oh, I got the new inlet manifold from America. And um, the other one was just eaten out that badly that it was unusable, unrepairable, and um, the metal was just rubbish. And look, it's probably taken me two years to find one. I could, I found one in the states, and where they where they eat out on these water jackets here, um, that blanks off the water jacket in the head. Um, that that bottom one is an open hole, and this one here, that hole there. That just helps it circulate like it's a bypass behind the thermostat housing. And there's been one on eBay over in the States for ages and it's had a, where it wears here, it had a business card over there. So I contacted the bloke and asked him for a photo of it without his business card there and he wouldn't do it. And so I left it there. And I found another one in the States and I contacted the bloke and he's, no, he's not sending to Australia. No, too much rooting around. So, oh, not to worry. So, Anyway, as time went by, um, I've always kept a little bit of an eye out and, you know, it's like one of those things, sometimes you ride onto it, all over it, and other days you just let it slide and um, if you see one, you see one. So, anyway, I did find one and I spoke to the bloke over there and, yep, happy to send it over. So, I've had it here for a little while now, you, you probably remember it from the stew, and I've stripped it down and, look, it's in good nick. One of the threads for the thermostat housing here in the alloy is pulled, which is not a worry. I'll just pop a stainless steel helicoil in there um, and that will save that thread for us. And um, I may even put studs in. They had bolts originally, but I, I don't know whether I'll put studs or bolts. We'll just see. But um, so 
anyway, uh, I got this. By the time it come to Australia, um, we're going to have to charge a bit of 850 bucks for it, which is a lot of money. And um, but otherwise, the tractor was just uh, it was just a hunk of junk sitting out the front there, where you couldn't get the engine going and all that. And he, he had actually thought about putting a Dexter motor in it, but. Um, Anyway, it's been sitting out the front there for ages and ages and Saturday I was talking to Biddy and um, having a yarn and I said, oh, that bloody tractor out the front there. I said, I've been looking at it and you reckon you would sell it to me? I said, it's sort of interesting, it's my size tractor, you know, it's a little tractor that I can cart to shows. It's a bit different and I said, yeah, it's, a, it's not bad. And um, he said, oh, I don't know, Lance, I don't know what to do. And I said, oh, well, look, I've, it's just an offer. Yeah, because um, um, he, well, he, uh, well the, the whole story is he bought it for $400. And then he paid me to do the holly carby up on it. And the kit was, oh, bloody expensive. And, and it was probably two or $300 to do the carby up. It's, a, it's expensive holly to do up. And so he'd paid me for that, and he'd also paid me for um, points, plugs, condensers, um, hoses, bits and pieces like that. So um, it had cost him about four four fifty dollars extra on top of that. And then there was this manifold coming on for eight fifty. So um, so I said to him, I said, yeah, I can give you eight hundred bucks for it. And, he said, oh, I don't know. He said, I'm 75 now. The family's onto me to sell a few tractors. He said, the, the, um, the kids aren't interested. And he's, he's got some lovely Holden cars now. And um, he said, they're interested in the cars, but not the tractors. So he said, oh, I don't know. He said, make it a thousand bucks and you can have it. And I said, yeah, all right. It's only money, mate. So thousand bucks. And um, yeah, and I, this comes off his account. And um, I've got to wear the price of this, so that's okay. So we did the deal. So now I own that little Ford tractor out the front there. And um, yesterday afternoon, I had a after coming home from the shop, I had a couple of hours buggering around. So um, you might notice the surface here is black. Well, where the coolant comes and eats these out, um, I've used a, I've used the um, CRC etch it, and it's an etch for aluminium, copper and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I've etched it and then it says you can etch it and then it's a good etch for a zinc top coat. So it's got an etch, so it etched into the metal and I've put the black zinc over top where the gasket will go and where the water will touch the manifold um, in an attempt to stop any future um, decay of this new manifold. So. So anyway, I've, I'm now the proud owner of a bloody Ford 2000 petrol. Now, there's a couple of serial numbers on it and I'm having trouble, um, but look, I've only spent, I haven't spent any time on a computer yet, I've spent time on my phone, but look, I'll put a couple of photos in here. Now, the first photo is on the right hand side of the bell housing and it's got a, a B number and a date number and the left hand side under the hydraulic pump that's a bit hard to see there's another number. Now I've been looking in the American um, tractor data and things like that and it says the the number on the left hand side of the bell housing should start with a C and then be six letters. Um, it doesn't quite line up with that yet the numbers on the right hand side of the bell housing start with a B and so um, I have found a, a, an operator's book online um, on the Ford three cylinder Facebook page Jim Cochran um, he must have a hundred million books old Jim and he's, he's kind enough to um, to scan them and put them on the file section of these Facebook pages and, and I've found some books but I, I can't actually work out the date yet. Um, James, James Brown, <laughs> that is a job for you. <laughs> um, he'd be all over it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble working out the date now. Um, it has 2000 Y cast into the head and it is a later tractor because it actually has a spin-on oil filter. 
where the early ones weren't. Now the, the American um, the American early 2000s, they had a peaky bonnet like the 600 and then later on they become this 2000 type bonnet like I've got out there. So, um, so look, if you're, if you're conversant in such matters, um, yeah, or you can help me date it and tell me a few things about it from the numbers. I have got some info somewhere on it, but I've, you know, I've got two offices and I've got to work out, <laughs> work out what I've done with it all. And I looked in the Steiner catalogue and the Steiner catalogue has the 2000s, but I'm pretty sure what they're referring to are the tractors after the 8N, 9N, 2N sort of thing and with the peaky bonnet because they start with C. And um, so I'm not sure yet, but um, I'm not sure of the date, but um, it looks like, I think they made them up to 75 from what I can work out. But, um, I'll, but yeah, with those photos, um, yeah, it, someone might be able to jump on and help me out with it, um, give me a bit of info. E um, email it to me. Um, well, either put it in a YouTube message or email it to me. Um, BundyBearShed at gmail.com. Um, we've got another email now too because of the website. And you'll see at the front of the video there's a website link. And that's where I'm building the information, you know, the library, when I get time. But it's, it's not happening very fast. Um, it's lance at bundybearshed.com.au. So um, either email works. Um, I check them every couple of days. Um, the gmail.com one I check more often because it's on my phone and it, it pings me when something's happening, so we'll see. Um, I also ordered a new canopy for the Queensland Tractor Spares 3 metre by 3 metre gazebo. We've got a few functions coming up soon and the other one was getting old and shabby and um, yeah, just needed a tidy up. It still had the original logo on it that John Deere didn't like, so We've, put the, we've updated the logo, but it's very tight on the frame where the old one, you could leave the frame, leave the top on the frame and just pop him up and click, 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 and it was done. But I put the frame on loosely or the top on loosely and it was bloody hard work getting it up there. So um, anyway, um, I've got it out the front there and I've, I've let it cycle, you know, get a bit of dew on it, a bit of water, then dry out with the sun through the day. And I'm trying to cycle it and put a bit of tension on it so it stretches or else what we're going to have to do is just loosen it off on the corners each time, then fold it up and put it up and that's so no big deal. Um, oh, back onto the 2000, Ford 2000. The distributor is a bit dicky in it and it had vacuum advance on it and the vacuum advance is seized and uh, it's just a bit crap. So we're a Steiner agent in Australia. So um, Steiner have actually got a nice new distributor for them. Um, instead of using vacuum advance, um, but yeah, you know, when the load comes on, vacuum advance, since all is a bit laggy and that, um, they have a new distributor with mechanical advance on it, and it takes the same points as the original one. Um, I thought it was Delco, but it's Motorcraft, and um, it takes the original Motorcraft distributor cap, and original points condenser, and all that. So I've ordered one of those. Um, that'll be here in a couple of weeks from the states so I'm going to put a new new distributor in it because of the other ones all bogged up um, but anyway look I'll, I'll take you for a little walk around it now we're, we're proud owners of it and all I'm doing at the moment I just want to get the tractor running it's um I don't want to do anything else major with it I've, I want to be able to go out there start it and move it around and that way it will end up in the shed here out of the weather um, when I got it off video, I said, look, I, um, when I had it here for repairs, I said, look, I can't give you any inside room. I'm not, I'm, I'm squeezed now. And he said, yeah, that's all right. Leave it out the front. Um, but the panels are pretty good. Um, I've put in an order yesterday with Sparex for a new grill and new top grill and you know, some hoses and uh, grill clips and oh, a muffler. Um, but I notice now that the muffler, the manifold's cracked, where the muffler goes in, um, the pipe's rusted in and it's cracked, but I, I didn't quite remember I'd noticed that before, but anyway. But look, that'll do for this chat. Um, I'll go handheld now, we'll pop outside, I'll show you the gazebo and I'll show you the Ford 2000 and um, yeah, we'll see how we go from there, eh? So look, as Barry says, your time is much appreciated, thanks for dropping by. 
and I'll take you for a little walk around the 2000. Okay, here's a little tractor. Um, now on the side here, on the bonnet, it just has Ford. You can't see, you can't see anything else there. Um, we'll go around the other side. And you can't actually see there either, so. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be a 2000. Um, the seat's buggered and Sparex aren't making those anymore. Um, the guards are, look, they're pretty good for what they are. Um, but like I say, it's been sitting out the front here for ages. Um, the tyres, look, the tyres are perished. Um, old mate, not Biddy, but the fellow rebought it off, has put black silicon in there, so they're junk. But they might hold the tractor up for me. But the panels are nice and straight. I have a new steering wheel coming for it. Um, yeah, the steering box has got a slight little leak on it. Might not have any oil in it. Um, but yeah, it's a spin-on oil filter with T6 on the block. The exhaust manifold, um, you can see a pipe's rusted in there and you can actually see a little crack down there. I don't know whether I'll fix that. I, I believe these are pretty cheap. I haven't looked into that properly. I've got the fuel, they have a little fuel pump down there that's out of there. The alternator, it wouldn't have had that originally, but I might keep that there. Um, the panels here are pretty good. There's a bit of a ding in here, which I might be able to pull out somehow. The radiator is the original one, and it is rock solid. Yeah, that's a beauty. Um, the front grill's not too bad, but I do have a new one coming, because it has all these, it has cracks and things in it, so. There's a new one there. Um, it's a swept axle model, so the axle swept back. Now on the head here, it has 2000 Y. And you might remember when I first got it here, this spark plug had never been out and it was broken off in the head and I had to actually get all the threads out and all that sort of thing, so. Um, so I have had this out the front all covered up and I had oil down the bore, so I um, I wound it over yesterday and put new oil down the bore and let it sit and wound it over again. And it's got compression, so that's not too bad. There's a little bit. I've cleaned up the surface here and cleaned up all these threads. And um, this here, you can see how because the alloy ate out, it's eaten down here a little bit. But there's still a good surface around the end there, so. I'm tossing up with whether I grind that out and put a bit of quick metal in or just use 515 there, I'm not sure. Um, I'll have the tappet cover off here and the tappets are bloody loose, all of them. So, but with Fords, there's these little Welsh plugs down in there, there's three little Welsh plugs and and I've actually seen engines done up because they had water in the sump. They really sleeved them and done the whole job, put them back and they still had water. <laughs> and these bloody little wells plugs were leaking. So because I don't have much faith in the cooling system because of some of the junk there, I'm going to pop that rocker gear off and put new wells plugs in there. There's two wells plugs here that look like they've never been changed. I'll, I'll check first and make sure they're not stainless. Um, they may be, I don't know. Um, but there's your Delco starter, it's a Bendix drive starter. And the distributor, look, the bits inside here on advance and all that do move. But um, look, I, I think I'm, because this has all been seized and it's had no movement there because the vacuum advance is seized, um, she must have been a pig to run, I reckon. And yeah, the wires are all frayed inside. Well, that's just broken off now on your lance. <laughs> um, so I am going to put that new distributor in, I'm going to put a hot coil on and the water pump's not too bad but look I have one here so I think I'll do that because like I say I don't trust the cooling system very much. Um, but yeah look 
for the price for a thousand dollars it's worth doing um it wouldn't be worth much more than that i don't know and look it was just that it was different um i just want to get it running and once i get it running i'll button him up put the bonnet on i've got a new muffler coming for it um i'm just going to button him up new filters service it up and even the wheels and tires will stay there for the moment um you can see the the centers here they're quite thick a little bit thicker than the early fergie ones and you can tell they've got all the holes around here for the weights where the fergie ones don't have that they um yeah they're um like a solid thing but the same size wheels as fergies same front rims um the front rims look the same um around the back So the, you know, the guards aren't really rusty compared, you know, to what you think. There's a ding in the guard here, and there's a little bit of rust there, but there's a ding in the guard here, which I could probably pull straight. This is a bit of a unit, leaky PDO seal, but that's no worries. I don't even know if any of this works yet. Um, <clears throat> so it's got diff lock and all that on it. So um, the brakes and the axles look very similar to a Fergie same but different if you know what I mean <laughs> so anyway I wonder was that a date code one no oh no an 87 wouldn't be a date code 18th of the 7th 3 73 I don't know look at the wear in here in that arm there There's a lot of wear up the front there too by the looks in that cross shaft anyway i don't even know if that goes up and down yet so we'll get it going we can't sparrax and him don't have that seat available anymore so um that might just get a suspension seat on it and there's a little bit of a leak under there as well but it hasn't been pressure cleaned or anything like that that's just how it came in so Anyway, that's, um, I'll try and get a little bit of time on that just to get it running. Like I say, I just, I just want to have it running, have it a, as a running tractor so I can jump on it, run around the block in it or, um, yeah, just warts and all, I could pop it into a show or something like that. See what happens there. Oh, oh, I did get the carry all painted. Um, because the 135's got Cat 2 pins, I've put Cat 2 pins on it and... Yeah, it's come up okay. It's sitting out here in the, sitting out here hardening. I like to cycle paint, you know, put it outside and let it get hot and cold, hot and cold a few times and it seems to harden it all off nicely. So, so yeah, that's all done. Now, if I come back out here, <coughs> here's the Queensland Tractor Spares Hoochie. Um, so it's got the later logo on it now. It's got the Queensland Tractor Spares website on it. And um, that's three metre by three metre. It's about 700 bucks by the time we got the new top on it. And it's a canopy outdoors of the company. Canopy outdoor. And this is a Circulex, they call it. And it's got 50 mil round poles here. And these feet, you can nail them down. They have steel under them, under the plastic and look this must be well their records went back 10 years and we must have had it before then so um, i had lost one of these screws over time it had rattled out and they gave me some of those and yeah so you don't mind there's your phone number if anyone if anyone wants one but um yeah look it's time time tested for us this thing so it's just sitting there, sitting there where it is, just, um, yeah, the, it doesn't look like the sun's going to play it with it with us today, but it's got some moisture on it, and I've just been around trying to stretch it again a bit, try and help, but, um, yeah, we'll have that up at Billa Wheeler and a few of the shows that we go to, just to, yeah, just to freshen up and a tidy up, and um, when we go to tractor shows, we often take that, and... You'll notice that in the engine compounds and all that, they often have 
Um, they often have gazebos and that, but the tractor yards get left out. So we often take that and we just sit under there chatting out of the sun. Um, even our club, like we've got a brand new gazebo, but oh, the tractor bloke, you're not allowed to have it. <laughs> it's got to go in the engine compound, so, um, <clears throat> which is fair enough, you know, we don't really mind. But, um, but yeah, um, the engine compounds get looked after with all sorts of things and fencing and us other blokes. We just look after ourselves, so that's just a thing to look after ourselves a bit and give us some shade because, yeah, normally if I don't take this, um, yeah, we all got to just sit out there in a paddock in the sun and that's no good. So. Anyway, that'll do. We'll catch you later on, eh? So, a quick little update on these Welsh plugs. Yeah, I got a screwdriver and just went poking around and poked a hole clean through that one. So, yeah, they're not stainless or anything like that. They're just um, rusted out rubbish. So, that means we'll, we'll run through the whole lot here, I think, and um, yeah, you go from there.